How do you follow up a masterpiece? If Nintendo has taught us anything, it's to get weird with it. Ditching the familiarity of Hyrule, Princess Zelda, and Ganon, Link washes up on the mysterious shores of Koholan Island. He befriends a chain chomp, stomps Goombas, and meets a quirky cast of characters. 26 years later, Link's Awakening is still considered one of the strangest Zelda games ever made, and that's no coincidence. Director Takashi Tezuka and his team had an unusual influence. David Lynch's Twin Peaks. But how did Tezuka get from a show about a small town murder investigation to Link's Awakening? It started when he and programmer Kazuaki Morita began messing around with a Game Boy dev kit after work. They wanted to see if they could port the SNES hit, A Link to the Past, to the Game Boy. As this After Hours project took shape, Tezuka formally pitched a handheld Zelda game to Nintendo and was given the green light. However, as development progressed, the team decided to make a brand new Zelda adventure rather than just a port. With this new directive, Tezuka brought on Kensuke Tanabe and Yoshiaki Koizumi to write the script. Both devs worked on A Link to the Past, however Koizumi, who had a background in filmmaking, wrote the instruction manual. He believed that video games could convey drama and storytelling in a unique way, but up until this point most Nintendo games were made with gameplay in mind. Sure, they had an overarching goal and a loose narrative like Save the Princess or Save the Other Princess, but Koizumi wanted to dig deeper. Koizumi's ideas aligned almost perfectly with what Tezuka had in mind. Given the limitations of the Game Boy, Tezuka wanted to give Link's Awakening's island a small town vibe with distinct characteristics. He gave Koizumi and Tanabe permission to cut some of the series' most familiar aspects. With that in mind, Koizumi and Tanabe created a quirky cast of characters. Although dialogue is sparse, these characters and the conversations you have with them adds a lot of flavor to the island. In their own ways, these characters served a greater narrative rather than just gameplay. It's pretty hard to forget some of the strange people you meet on this adventure, like the shy grandpa Orira and the ghost who is trying to find his way back home. But how does all this relate with Twin Peaks? Well, you'd be hard pressed to find any direct references to Twin Peaks, but there are a lot of parallels. In a roundtable conversation with former Nintendo president Satoru Iwata, Zelda series producer Eiji Anuma, and Tezuka, Tezuka directly calls out Twin Peaks and says, I was talking about fashioning Link's Awakening with a feel that's somewhat like Twin Peaks. The drama was all about a small number of characters in a small town. You can see these similarities right at the beginning. Like Dale Cooper, Twin Peaks' protagonist Link is a city boy who now finds himself in a small town. At the time, Link's Awakening was the first in the series to take place outside of Hyrule. This means that, for the first time, Link and the player were both exploring an unfamiliar world together and trying to make sense of it. Dale Cooper is faced with a similar challenge when he arrives in Twin Peaks. If I haven't made it obvious yet, both Twin Peaks and Link's Awakening have their fair share of quirky characters. Link's Awakening has Mr. Wright, who spends his days writing letters that never get a response, and Twin Peaks has Log Lady, a woman who carries around a log and claims to have a psychic connection to it. One day, my log will have something to say about this. Dreams also play a huge role in both of them. There are a number of characters in Link's Awakening that reference their dreams, and in Twin Peaks, Dale Cooper uses his dreams to help further his investigation. However, Tezuka and his team's fascination with Twin Peaks shouldn't come as a surprise. Believe it or not, despite only being available on one network, Twin Peaks took off in Japan, and Link's Awakening certainly isn't the only Japanese Twin Peaks-inspired game. That's right, I'm looking at you, Deadly Premonition. But what did this odd take on the Zelda series mean for the franchise? Well, for one, Link's Awakening's greater emphasis on story and weird characters is something that has stuck with the series ever since. The only other game in the franchise to rival Link's Awakening on the weirdness scale is Majora's Mask, and wouldn't you know it, Majora's Mask is directed by none other than Koizumi. Zelda games don't get weird often, but when they do, it's a refreshingly different and memorable take on the beloved franchise. And if you ask me, we have Twin Peaks to thank for that.